Hi, my name is Thomas Gunn and then welcome to Dust House. So this is a brand new channel that I'm really excited and pumped to get up and running. I've been wanting to do this a long time and uh, as life would have it, lately things have come to pass that give me the opportunity to follow this dream. So this is going to be a lifestyle channel. I plan on exploring cooking, baking, renovating, decorating, yard work. Uh, it's going to be an evolution. Together we'll see where it goes. Um, and you know, by your, you know, judging by your feedback and which videos you end up liking, that'll give me an indication of which direction I should follow. And I'm certainly open to suggestions. Like I said, this is brand new to me. Um, from the lighting down to being in front of the camera, and it's uh, all kind of daunting. But I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna power through, and we're gonna do this. I'm, uh, like I said, I'm quite excited. So, oh yeah, and I know I should be saying you need to uh, subscribe and ring that bell. Uh, it'll really help me out. So I hope you do that because uh, I'm going to try to do the best content I can. I've already got ideas for upcoming videos. So please give this one a like. And uh, so yeah, so the first thing we're going to do today is a recipe, a German meat dish called Rouladen. It's quite traditional. Um, the word Roulade comes from the French for to roll. So it's actually a rolled meat dish. It's a uh, Pretty simple stuffing. The gravy is also fairly simple. Total time, cook time, is about two and a half to three hours, but most of that time is with it sitting in the oven in a pot, so you can be free to do other things. Uh, prep time, I'm probably going to say you're looking at around 30 minutes, so that's really not too bad. Uh, today I'm making eight rouladen, so keep that in mind. If you're doubling the recipe, obviously your prep time will be longer, uh, but the actual cook time will be the same. So, uh, Okay, here we go. So I'm all excited. We're going to get this going. Um, uh, here we go. Rouladen. So now we're going to go over the list of ingredients. So the first thing you're going to need is the veal scallop. Uh, actually, sorry, <laughs> beef scallop. Um, as you can see, it's quite thin. Um, we're going to be making it thinner even because we want to get these pieces a bit larger. So in order to do that, we're going to be using a meat pounder. We're not going to use the tenderizing end. We're going to use the flat end um, just to pound the meat. And when you're pounding it, you hit and push out while you're hitting. Uh, I'll show you this in greater detail after, but this would be the motion you're using. Uh, when you see if the meat starts to break up, stop there. You've gone far enough. You're also going to need some Dijon mustard with a basting brush, or you could also use the back of a teaspoon. You're going to need salt and pepper. Um, yeah, I know most uh, cooking shows like to have their salt and pepper in a little bowl, but I just find personally, I think that's a lot of cross contamination. You're, you know, you're touching your meat or your other ingredients and putting it back in the salt or pepper, you know, several times. I don't really like that. I, I like using a shaker and I find you get a much more even spread of the salt or pepper. You're going to be needing some these are, I mean, I call them roulade needles, but they're just uh, short skewers. <clears throat> you can probably find them in any kitchen store. I think I even found them in a grocery store. Uh, conversely, you could also use string, cotton twine, to tie up your rouladens, but this is much easier and goes much quicker, and it's much easier to remove at the end. You're going to need some beef stock. Uh, one carton is fine. <clears throat> We're going to be using this and mixing it with some water once the rouladen is browned. You're also going to need some finely chopped pickles. This, I'm making um, eight rouladen, so this is about, I would say, five finely chopped pickles. You're going to need finely chopped onion. This is one large onion, finely chopped. I like a Vidalia onion. It's a bit sweeter, um, but you can use any onion. The only onion I don't think I would use is a red onion because I find they don't break up as easily when they're cooking. And the other thing you're going to need is some finely chopped bacon. Um, again, it's been finely chopped. This is just to spread on the roulade for part of the stuffing. Um, I just want to mention when you are buying bacon, um, you probably all know this, but if you don't, this is the front of the package. The back of the package, they always have a window where you see some of the slices. So when you're going to look for your bacon, look at the back and pick a package where you see more meat than fat. 
um, this will be a good indication of, you know, how much actual bacon you're getting as opposed to fat. So if you see one that has mostly fat showing, take another package or keep rifling through until you find one that you like. So that's all the ingredients. Um, now we're going to go and move into the preparation. So I'm going to take one slice of the beef. I'm going to put it on a board. Yes, you could use, you know, I see a lot of cooking shows where they put it between two pieces of saran wrap or plastic <clears throat> because they say, you know, it works better. Quite frankly, I don't find it works better. I find the plastic always starts bunching up, never stays where you want it to. It starts sliding around on the board. As long as your board is clean, this is a, a great board. It's a large board. I got it at Ikea, actually. It's made out of bamboo. It cleans really easily. I find this is better because the meat actually has something to grab onto, so as you're trying to pound it flat, it's not moving around all over the place. So here we go. I'm just going to move some things off my board because it's going to make a bit of noise. All right, don't do this when the kids are in bed or when grandma's taking a nap. No offense to grandmas, I'm talking about, you know, if you're 95, not if you're 65. <laughs> and uh, here we go. So we're going to start pounding. Remember, the pounding motion is down and out. I hope you can see what's going on here. So here we go. So as you can see, it's quite a bit bigger. You can see where I've actually probably gone maybe a bit too hard and there's some breakage, but don't worry about it. It's going to be rolled. So from here, you're going to sprinkle with pepper. Actually, that's salt, but, you know, and some pepper. Just a nice evil level sprinkling. Now you're going to coat it with some Dijon mustard. Use a nice good Dijon mustard. I would not use a grainy one. Um, I find when you're eating it with a grainy one, you might get some, you know, grains that you're actually chomping down on, which doesn't always feel as nice. Now you're going to sprinkle this with onions. You just want to get a nice sprinkle everywhere. Now you're going to go with the pickles. Again, you don't want to overdo anything. It's just a nice sprinkle. Now we're going to lay down some bacon. Now the bacon tends to stick together. It's a bit of a pain, but as you can see, it's not that bad. It uh, moves along pretty quickly. So just get it everywhere so there's a piece in every bite, more or less. And also what the bacon does is because of the fat, it imparts some moisture and some um, fat to the dish. So here we have it. We're good to go. Now we're going to start rolling. So take your meat and just roll it. Don't roll it over tight. Don't roll it too loose. Just a nice, simple, just let the meat do most of the work. So there you have it. So now we have our roll. Now what we need to do is we need to pin it. So we're going to take our needles. I call them needles. They're, you know, mini skewers. So take your skewer, kind of try to fold this bottom one over. So you're going over to pull it in. You see what I'm doing? And then just push it in and kind of thread it in and out. That one's closed. Do the same thing with the other side. So there we go, needle goes in, pull it over, thread it through. There we go. And there you have it. So that's a roulade, or a roulade. So what we're going to do later on, I'll show you, but when we um, see now here, I have stuffing coming out, so no worries. I'm just going to put another needle in there. No big deal. There you go. That's your roulade. 
So what's going to happen when I have all eight done, I'll show you one more. Uh, when you have all eight done, these are going to be browned in a pot with oil. So what you're going to do when you start to brown it, put the uh, seam side down so that you seal this off. All right. So let's make one more. Here's our piece of scalloped beef. Again, same motion, you hit and push. It's like one fluid motion. Here we go. There we go. So as you can see, I mean, this one really didn't take that long. If I wasn't talking, it, you know, probably would have taken, what, one, two minutes. So let's, again, pepper. Nice, even sprinkling. I just use uh, black pepper. Salt. I don't use kosher salt. I just use regular table salt. Uh, first mistake. First comes the mustard, because it would be hard to put that on after the, uh, the onions and pickles. So here we go, a nice even layer. Don't go too heavy on the mustard. I've done that once, and I mean, unless you like your food quite spicy, it uh, was quite spicy. Okay, mustard's down, sprinkling of onions everywhere. You know, once you have all your mise en place, all your uh, preparations done, meaning chopping your onions and your pickles and your bacon, it really does move along quickly. You can do it in an assembly line fashion if your family wants to help out. Okay, next come the pickles. It really is important though that, you know, you give it a nice fine chop so that there's not anything too overpowering in each bite. And now we put down the bacon. Again, the bacon, I would just buy plain smoked bacon. I wouldn't buy anything that's, you know, uh, maple smoked or has any other kind of ingredient. I don't even think, you know, I mean, yes, you could go low sodium, but we really aren't using that much. And it is to give flavor to the dish. So I don't even think I would do the low sodium. So there we go, we're done. Time to roll. Just start it off slowly. And then it's just a matter of pushing it along. There we go. And we're done. So there's the seam side. Let's get our mini skewers. Pull that one over and thread it in and out. Try to get it over the, you know, the end of the seam side here. There's one. Now we're going to do the other one. Pull it over and through. Come back out and back in. Back out and back in. There we go. That one's done. A nice roulade. Ready to put in the pot. So I'm going to prepare the other six and then I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are. We're at the cooktop. The roulade have all been prepared um, in a pot that you can put into the oven afterwards. I'm just heating up some oil, uh, just a thin coating on the bottom of the pot so that you can start to brown the meat. So I'm going to be turning on the oven fan. I don't know if that's going to be too loud <clears throat> for me to talk over. So. What you're going to do is take the meat, find the seam side, put it down, nice little sizzle going. That's what you want to hear. You don't want it too strong. Now the one thing I'm going to tell you about roulade is they do spit a lot. So I'm just going to take a towel and cover my controls here so I don't have to do too much cleaning afterwards.
So now just let them go until uh, you know they come away from the pot easily. I'll show you they need to be a nice uh, brown on one side and then you're going to turn them over and brown the other side. I can't fit them all in at once so I'm going to do it in two batches. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned for the pickles, I just used a regular dill pickle. Um, I probably wouldn't use anything that has, you know, too much garlic or too much of any other spice. I would just stick with a regular dill pickle. Kuna, K-U-H-N-E, is a great brand. I mean, I like them. I think their pickles are great. They make a great sauerkraut. They make a great red cabbage. Uh, this is not sponsored. I'm just saying that they're a good brand that I like to use, but uh, they're not so easy to find. Not up here anyway in Canada. Um, not in Quebec anyway. I know that's much easier to find in Ontario. So we're just going to let these brown and uh, then we will do the second batch. So let's just have a look. See, it's not coming away easily yet. There's some resistance still, so that's still not done. I'm going to let it go a little longer. I'm going to turn up the heat just a little bit. You know, you always have to keep in mind that the oil might be very hot in the beginning, but when you're putting four such big pieces of meat in that are quite cool, they're really going to bring down the temperature of the oil. Yeah, I can tell that's not brown yet, so we're going to let it go. To uh, spare you the time of watching these brown, we'll take a little break and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. So I think they're good to turn around now, to turn over. So, see, here you go. This is what you want. You want a nice browning happening. And we're going to get that on both sides. See? Don't worry about that. That's not too dark at all. I'm going to turn this down a little bit because I'm burning myself. So, let's roll these over. And we will continue the browning process. This one is not up. Here we go. There we go. So now we're going to brown them on the other side. Uh, and I'll be back once they're done. Alright, so we're back. It's been actually two hours and 20 minutes. So as you can see, they are very tender, almost fall apart tender, which is exactly what you want. The liquid has cooked it down. You can see it started up here. So it's cooked down about half. So I think I will add a little more water just before I start the gravy. So let's pour in just a little more, not much. It's just really to increase the volume. So. Now at this stage, you could actually leave it as it is, put it in the refrigerator. So if you wanted to make this a day ahead, two days ahead, you're perfectly able to. You would just simply put this in the fridge now, cover it, put it in the fridge. Um, and when it's time to serve, you would bring it as is back up to a simmer, just until you heat the meat through. So you would let it come up to a simmer and probably let it simmer for about if you're doing it on the stove top, probably 10-15 minutes. If you're doing it in the oven, possibly a little bit longer, maybe 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And then you would go ahead, take the meat out. See, look at that, it's so tender, it fell apart already. You would take the meat out, put it on a platter, and then we will go ahead and make the gravy. So let me do that right now. I will take the meat out. And we'll go ahead and put the meat on a plate. I mean, for the most part, they should hold together quite well. 
Mm, smells very good in here right now. So as a rule of thumb, once they get to the point where, you know, they are starting to fall apart slightly, you know they're ready. So I had told you two and a half hours. Well, this was two hours and 20 minutes. And when I went to check, it was pretty tender and it was falling apart. So it was ready to be turned off. Okay, so now we have the liquid. This is the liquid we're going to be using to make the gravy. So the first thing to do is we're going to run it through a sieve and strain out all the bits and pieces that were let go while the meat was cooking. All right, so here we are. <clears throat> the meat is all brown. The pot, I've just poured off a little bit of the excess oil. I only had to pour off about a tablespoon's worth. The rest is still in the pot. I'm gonna turn the heat back on, on low. I'm just gonna pour in just a bit of the beef stock. Just to start loosening up the bits on the bottom a little bit. As you can see, it's already quite a deep brown gravy. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put all the meat back in the pot. So, let me turn down the heat. Let's place these all in. See if we can fit them all. I think it'll be a little bit tight. One there. One there. And one on top. Just pour these drippings back in. So now we're going to pour in enough stock to come halfway up the meat and then we're going to add enough water to almost cover. So let's bring this up to a boil. In the meantime, preheat your oven to 325 degrees. I do it on convection. It probably doesn't make a difference if you don't have a convection oven. Just put it on bake again for 300, at 325 degrees. And then once this is up to a simmer, we're going to cover it. And then we're going to put it in the oven and it'll stay in there for two and a half hours. So I would midway through have a look. I would probably move it around so the one that's on top uh, moves further down into the pot and if the liquid is gone by half I would say then add some more. Again I would do it half half with the beef stock and water. <clears throat> so as you can see it's coming up to the simmer. So let's put the cover on and now if you come with me let's give this a shot. go there's the oven so we're just going to put it in the oven the oven again is at 325 center of the oven close the door put your timer on and there you go now you can walk away and once they're done I'll be back all right, here we go. So now we're going to go through making the gravy. We're going to get the pot on the oven and we're going to turn the oven on. Fairly high heat. What we're going to do now is make a roux. Uh, a roux is basically a one-to-one -one fat and flour. So in this case, which is traditional, we're going to use butter. I'm going to put in about three to four tablespoons butter and get that melting. Uh, typically when you're making a roux, like I said, it's half fat, half 
flour, you could probably substitute one kind of fat for another. If you wanted to try it with bacon fat or goose fat, and then equal amounts of flour, that would probably work. It's just a thickening agent. So once you've made your roux, as soon as you start to add a liquid, it activates the roux, which then starts to thicken the liquid. So here we go, the butter's melted. We're gonna add the same amount of flour and stir until it starts to make a paste. So here you go, we can see we're getting a paste. You just want to cook the flour out. So what you're looking for is just a light golden color. Once you've achieved that, you're good to go. So, if you remember, we've um, strained the liquid that we had from cooking the rouladen. We're now going to take that liquid and we're going to pour it in slowly, just a bit at a time. So pour a little bit in. Get that incorporated. As you can see, it becomes a thick paste quite quickly. So once you've got it to a thick paste again, and it's all well incorporated, add some more liquid. And whisk that in. You know, it starts up looking a little lumpy, but as you keep whisking and as it keeps cooking, as you can see, it becomes very smooth. It's a very smooth paste. Obviously, this is much too thick to use as a gravy. So that's the rest of our drippings. We're going to incorporate that. So now from here on out, it's really a matter of getting the consistency that you want. As well as adding the flavors that you want. But I mean, if you were doing this with a chicken you know, a chicken stock, for example, right now you'd be at the stage where you have a very simple chicken gravy. This is the same method you would use when doing a, uh, the turkey gravy at Thanksgiving or at Christmas. You would simply substitute your turkey drippings for my rouladen drippings. But the method is the same. So let's just get this up to a little bubble. So this is where we're at right now. It's still quite thick. Still too thick to use as a gravy, but that's fine. That's what we're expecting because the drippings from the rouladen won't be enough to complete the gravy. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just simply add in some more of that beef stock that we had earlier. Keep combining. Back up to the simmer, still nice and thick. So now what you're going to do is add just a touch of cream. So I'm going to say that was a quarter cup. Quarter cup cream, you could use 10%, you could use 20%. I would not go any higher than that, it's not necessary. So now what you're going to do is give this a taste. So we'll just give it a quick taste. As you can see, it's still a thick gravy. It's not dripping anywhere. That actually tastes pretty good. It certainly doesn't need any more salt. There's plenty of salt in the um, beef stock and there's also enough salt from the gravy, the uh, rouladen drippings. So now one thing that is traditional for this type of gravy for rouladen is to add a touch of sour cream. However, if you were to just add the sour cream straight in, it would probably curdle because of the difference in temperature and also 
because of the difference in thickness. So what you're going to do is take your sour cream. Here I have about three tablespoons and just add in just a touch of water. That should be enough and stir it together. All you want to do is thin out the sour cream so that when it comes into contact with the gravy, it doesn't begin to curdle. And as an extra measure of safety, you can temper this a little bit. So by tempering, you're just putting in a little bit of the hot liquid into the cold, slowly warming up the cold to come to an approximation of the same temperature as the rest of your gravy. It doesn't have to be, you know, the exact same temperature. It doesn't have to be just as hot. You're really trying to get it warm enough so that when you pour it in, it's not a shock. So there we go. So this is enough. We're going to pour that into the gravy. Give it a good stir, a good whisk. Again, you can see it's still a nice thick gravy. It's not too runny. Give it a quick taste. The flavor is excellent. Obviously at this point you could decide if you want more pepper, if you want more salt. But to my taste, this is just right. And there you have it. So this is the gravy. Uh, when it comes time to serve, you would Put your roulade on a platter, pour just a touch of gravy over the top, and then put the rest of the gravy in a gravy boat and place it on the table so that people can use it to either add to their roulade or also if you're making dumplings or noodles to pour over their dumplings and noodles. So there you have it. That's a very simple method. It's the classic method of making a gravy with a roux. Like I said, you can use the same technique for making a turkey gravy or a chicken gravy. Very simple. And um, there you have it. Gravy 101. So here you go. Here's the typical traditional German meal of rouladen with dumplings and some glazed maple carrots. Dumplings in German are called Klöse. And uh, typically I would make this with red cabbage, but I didn't have any on hand, so we went with the glazed carrots. I hope you enjoy this meal. As you can see, the meat is super tender. It just breaks apart. It's a beautiful, savory dish. And I hope you give this a try and let me know if you enjoyed it. Take care. Be safe, be healthy. Thanks for watching.